All right, so we need to specify actions to attain those outcomes. This is what you want to outline in your supervision contract. This is what are you going to require? Now, you don't necessarily have to spell out every possible tiny thing that you're going to ask them to do, but you do want to list the nature of the activities and the requirements. So if, for example, you have a, um, a, a test, a practice exam that you have created, you might want to specify that part of the actions of their supervision, and you specify it in the contract, is that they are able to pass this practice exam. If you have certain activities that you want them to be able to do, so for example, you want them to be able to conduct an assessment uh, by themselves, to write up a treatment plan independently, to conduct a functional behavior assessment by themselves, and to write up a behavior intervention plan independently, um, then you want to list those things. Um, you want to maybe specify that you uh, that they are able to perform all of the items on task list five. Um, but you want to say what it is that you're expecting, because what you don't want to do is get to a point where you don't feel like a person is doing good, but you don't have any way to say that they're not, right? There's no data to back that up. So historically, there have been cases that have gone to the BACB where um, people have, trainees have had their supervisors sign their forms. And then at the end, the supervisor refuses to sign the final form saying, well, yes, you've got all your hours, but I don't think you're ready. Well, you need to define what does I will think you're ready look like. Um, what are you expecting of someone? And define that so that then later you can say, you haven't met this criteria yet. We need to continue until you can meet this criteria, as opposed to well, yes, you have all your hours and I never told you this, but this is what I really am looking for, right? So we need to spell it all out at the beginning. Within that contract, we want to have that criteria for satisfactory completion. What does it mean when we say, you know, that they can write a behavior plan? What, what does that look like? Do we have specifics? Um, we'll talk a little bit about this here in, in a few more slides too. But um, what is it that you're looking for? So that we know when it's done and when you can sign off. Um, you also want to specify causes for ending that supervision. Is there anything besides just both of you agreeing that you don't want to anymore, but is there anything else that would result in or could result in termination of the supervision contract? So maybe, and I have some examples here of this, but maybe if there's an ethical violation, then you're like, I don't want to supervise you anymore and I can, um, I can end our supervision contract because there has been an ethical violation. So think about all of those things and plan for them ahead of time because you want to spell them out in the contract, in the supervision contract, so that you guys can go back and reference that later if there's any questions or disputes. So here's some examples from our uh, trainee contract. Um, here's some examples of like requirements language. So timely submission of written reports um, that might even be further uh, outlined to be, you know, within one week of the uh, assigned due date or with notification, um, if it's going to be delayed, something like that. 
communicates effectively. Well, what does that look like? Um, so here we've spelled it out, adequately covers the subject, gets the point across without extraneous information, uh, technological with regard to behavior analytic terminology, explaining their thought process with enough information for the supervisor to be able to provide feedback. Um, so that one for me is one where if I say, okay, well, um, where were you headed with this? And a trainee just says, well, I don't know. Like, well, it's really hard to give feedback if the individual is not able to kind of discuss what they know or where they were headed. So that's kind of what that is targeting. Um, other examples of communicates effectively respond within 48 hours to written contact by supervisor. So emails, um, make revisions um, based upon feedback prior to the next supervision session and participate during supervision by asking questions or making related comments at least eight times per hour. Um, that was one that we added um, in an hour, eight times is, is very easy to meet, um, but we wanted to make sure that people were not just sort of passive listening, passive learning, um, especially since a lot, uh, well, our, our field supervision has been almost exclusively remote. Um, in the first uh, few years, um, we did have some in-person sessions, but for the last five years, probably more than that, five to seven years, it's been exclusively remote supervision. So we want to make sure that people are participating and not just kind of listening and um are actively engaged with the supervision because at as a remote delivery, it can be um, easy to tune out. Like hopefully you guys are not right now watching this. Um, but having some of that back and forth at least eight times per hour is spelled out in our contract. All right, um, example completion language. Um, so this is from our progress monitoring form, which I will show you that later. Um, but requirements for, for continuing within the program or continuing the supervision without an SDP, that is a supervision development plan. We'll talk about that one too. Um, following each review, like I said, a lot of this is referencing things that I'll explain as we go along. But requirements for continuing. Uh, monthly verification forms are signed by bo both parties. Uh, new items on the fifth edition task list have been mastered. At least 80% of all written assignments are completed. We do have written assignments for every topic, um, for every group supervision. Uh, and I will talk about those as well. Uh, direct observation conducted 100% of supervisory periods. So that's not optional. <laughs> you have to provide that direct observation opportunity. Um, so that is part of continuing. If you don't have that component, then maybe this isn't going to be a good option. Uh, the trainee attended at least 80% of the scheduled supervision sessions, and they gave notice for any that they could not attend. And if there was a supervision development plan in place to resolve, then they have resolved that. So these are um, expectations for each month as we go along that they are meeting the requirements of the field supervision. Um, this also could be where you might um, list any additionals like taking a specific exam and passing it like not the national exam, but practice exams that you might have, or demonstrating certain skills within your setting um, that you want to see um, to show that they are prepared for behavior analytic work in that setting. Spell it out from the beginning. Um, we have what we call a supervision development plan, um, which is an improvement plan. So if there's an area in our progress monitoring that someone has not met the expectations, then what we want to do is 
write up a plan on how to help the trainee um, resolve that issue. Supervision for me as a philosophy is not like taking a course where I'm going to say pass fail, right? Supervision is about meeting the individual where they are, supporting them to master the skills necessary to be an ethical behavior analyst. So while there definitely are some things that would discontinue that relationship, that supervisory relationship, which we'll show, I think, on the next slide, um, the goal is the end product. And I am willing to be flexible with the individual, provide additional supports in order to help them make progress. What we want to do, though, is be clear about those types of expectations as well. So our particular program is funded by the state, and we are able to, through that funding, offer the supervision at no cost to the trainee. That means that we want to be using those funds for supervising trainees that are committed to the program. So that is why we have some parameters around, are you still capable of being supervised? And then also, you know, on a personal level, you should think about what are the types of things that would make you no longer want to or be able to supervise an individual because it shouldn't be an aversive relationship for either the trainee or the supervisor. So in this case, we have an improvement plan because we are willing to work with and support the trainee so long as they are um, making the efforts and continuing to make progress. Um, so the supervision development plan includes the areas identified for improvement and the requirements. Um, the trainee and the supervisor write it together, identifying strategies that are going to help the trainee make those improvements. So identifying the barriers, um, identifying what supports might be uh, needed outlining a timeline for improvement. Um, and we want to, we keep it small, like within the next 200 experience hours. So that's like maybe a month and a half for your really fast accruing trainees, or it gives them a few months if they are not accruing their hours that quickly. And then everybody signs the plan and we can go back and we can look at it. Because in our termination language, we have um, failure to resolve those development plans after two consecutive monitoring sessions um, is one of our criteria for ending the supervisory relationship. Um, so that's the second one there. Trainee fails to resolve the SDP after two consecutive progress monitoring sessions, which means that we met and we identified a problem, we wrote a plan, we met again, they hadn't fixed it, and we met again, and they still haven't fixed it. So that's three times that one of our expectations has not been met. And in that case, this might not be the right time, the right place, the right circumstances for this individual to receive their supervision through our program. Um, the first one listed there, trainee receives three unsatisfactory progress monitoring forms. Total, does not have to be consecutive. Again, I'm gonna show you the progress monitoring form later, but the idea is that if the student is not progressing despite being supported or additional supports provided, then again, maybe there are factors outside of everyone's control that are not conducive to pursuing this certification at this time. And then our third one is egregious violation of the professional and ethics ethical compliance code. Um, and actually that, I gotta change the wording on that, um, the ethics code um, and or behavior that jeopardizes the well-being of clients or other team members. So if there is something 
egregious, dramatic um, that comes to light, um, then that is grounds for ending the supervisory relationship. So these are just examples of some of the language that you might want to think about and include in your contracts to make sure that you are addressing things before they come up so that there is a clear expectation for the trainees about what you want and what you don't want, just like we would do with our learners. <laughs>